The Supreme Court is all set to resume hearing the Mudgal report into IPL fixing and betting charges today. Now, the probe panel, which submitted its report on the 3rd of November, named N. Srinivasan for not acting against those who were violating IPL norms. The panel also found Gurunath Mayapan and Raj Kundra guilty of betting. Srinivasan then filed an affidavit saying he lost close to a year of his elected term on the basis of the charges which were falsely motivated. Srinivasan even went on to add that he should be reinstated as BCCI president. Sundar Raman also claimed innocence, saying that interaction with celebrities was part of his job and such interaction shouldn't be basis of any misdemeanor on his part. The hearing now resumes today to decide the future of Srinivasan and other malign figures of Indian cricket. And Rajya Sabha MP and former Indian cricketer Sachin Tendulkar has refused to react on the probe report. While coming out of parliament today, he said that he would not like to comment on the issue. See, on, on the Mudgal committee report, I think uh, the Honorable uh, Supreme Court is hearing this and, and uh, it would be, it would be uh, not uh, wise to make any comment right now and respect. And our correspondent Shivani Gupta now joining us live from the Supreme Court. Shivani, a big day today considering uh, the, the, the hearing will actually resume and more importantly the fate of Srinivasan and the Chennai Super Kings will also be decided. Absolutely. After the last hearing, uh, when the uh, report uh, pertaining to two, these four individuals, uh, Srinivasan, Sundar Raman, Raj Kundra and Gurunath Mayapan was made public, all four parties have actually uh, submitted uh, their responses and filed affidavits as well. When we're talking about N. Srinivasan, the most important thing is that he's already filed an affidavit after reading the report saying that he uh, has done nothing wrong, the Mudgal report has found nothing incriminating against him and therefore he should be allowed to resume his office now as the president of the BCCI most importantly be allowed to now take part in the BCCI elections which are scheduled for later in December extremely important uh, decision could come in this regard if the Supreme Court decides to uh, pass an order in this regard because uh, everything hinges on N. Srinivasan he is the main uh, personality involved in this case uh, he has already pleaded that there is nothing against him and he should be allowed to go ahead he has claimed in his affidavit that he has already lost more than a year of his office uh, because of uh, charges made against him which are absolutely baseless uh, and actually are uh, uh, you know an effort to malign him not just that uh, CSK Chennai Super Kings which is his uh, franchise owned by his company India Cements filed a separate affidavit as well on the, on Friday saying that there is absolutely no grounds uh, for termination or any action against Chennai Super Kings they have refuted the uh, Mudgal panel uh, uh, finding that Gurunath Mayapan was indeed a team official. What they have also said is that he has not drawn any salary from India Cement or from Chennai Super Kings. So there is no relationship between Gurunath Mayapan and Chennai Super Kings. Of course, in public uh, eye, everyone has seen him as a deemed owner. Everybody has seen him in the dugouts, at the auctions, as a team principal. In fact, you know, his uh, Twitter page uh, before the scandal broke out used to call him a team principal of the Chennai Super Kings. Right. So, this, these arguments are going to come up in court today. But what Chennai Super Kings have also said that even if he is an official, then the uh, uh, clause 11.3b of the contract does not quite apply here because that only applies to the franchise itself or the uh, owners of the franchise. Importantly, right. Raj Kundra, who is another individual whose name came out, has also uh, filed an affidavit. Uh, Rajasthan Royals have distanced themselves from Raj Kundra saying that he doesn't hold any stake. So, therefore, his betting uh, activity have no uh, bearing on Rajasthan Royals as a franchise itself. Mm -hmm. So all these parties, Sundaraman filing his response as well, saying that he didn't know that Govindu Dara Singh was betting, he didn't know that he was a bookie, it's part of his job to communicate with celebrities around the Indian uh, Premier League. So right. all of these parties have filed their responses, have filed separate affidavits and it will be very interesting to see just what... Um, decision the Supreme Court takes with regards to these individuals. Of course, uh, lots of arguments and counter arguments are going to be made in court today because this is the first hearing after the report was made public to all parties. Uh, Hari Salve, who is the lawyer for the petitioner, has already argued okay. that there is a clear case of conflict of interest for N. Srinivasan and also a case of cover-up because remember, not only did he say in public that Gurunath Mayapan is not a team official as against what has been found by the uh, panel, he also, uh, the BCCI's uh, internal 
pro uh, committee actually gave a clean chit to everyone so very very right. important day today sanjana absolutely very significant we also have rasesh uh, correspondent joining us in the story as well rasesh uh, shivani has elaborated what the supreme court found what the what the probe report you know uh, what its crucial findings were but if you can actually just shed light as shivani has been mentioning on all the replies that have been filed we understand that obviously the bcci has filed one shrinivasan has filed one and came as no surprise that obviously they 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 took his side saying that he had nothing to do with this pronouncing him innocent in the entire thing Yes, Sanjana Shivani has brought us up to speed with uh, uh, with the with the affidavits that has been filed, in. and I think that is the 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 form in which the arguments are are going to be carried out today. Uh, we we know the details of the Justice Mudgal Committee report. We know the inferences that have been drawn. One of the inferences on Mr. Shrinivasan being that he there was an action on his part as a president against one of the players' misdemeanors uh, on Gurunath Mayappan. It's been established that he was uh, uh, in team official on Raj Kundra. It's been established that he indulged in betting, and we know that he was one of the co-owners. Uh, Uh, but but i think uh, of what we understand from the bcci there's going to be a aggressive defense uh, contesting some of the inferences that have been drawn by justice mudgal committee uh, remember internally the bcci has a smooth sailing they've already had a working committee meeting to which there has been no opposition the bcci has uh, decided in the minutes of the meeting that they're going to uh, back sundar raman after listening to his side of the story that the bcci is going to back mr shrinivasan as far as his position of uh, reinstatement is concerned he's already uh, filed an affidavit to that extent now it's really up to the supreme court the highest court of the land uh, to 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 interpret the interpretations of justice mudgal committee it's a fact finding committee they've drawn their inferences now it's for supreme court's reading and how they look at it whether they believe the inference that has been drawn against mr shrinivasan should bar him from contesting another election at the bcci and that he should wait and there should be further inquiry for them to decide if chennai super kings and rajasthan royals should be debarred because those two individuals rajkundra and gurunath mayappan are considered as owners and have uh, indulged in activities which obviously violate uh, to the public view at least uh, as per the bcci clause where it says that there is any material evidence which can harm the reputation of the league that those franchises can be debarred if the supreme court thinks that 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 action should be taken these are obviously difficult decisions remember it's an eight uh, franchise league and if two leagues uh, two leagues are if two teams are done away with it it it, it, it does leave the 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 league in a very difficult position and i think uh, the public interest at large and these are some of the points that i think the court would be looking at as well but as far as the central figure in this whole uh, uh, investigation is concerned mr shrinivasan it's now for the supreme court to decide if his misdemeanors uh, as justice mamudgal has inferred he has been obviously uh, considered as not being indulging in match fixing not uh, uh, affecting the probe at all but as far as in inaction against one of the misdemeanors of the players is concerned if the court interprets as that is something that should not allow him to contest again that is something that i think the whole cricket world is looking at quite absolutely rasesh let me go to shivani uh, shivani let's just look at the other players in in this entire thing you know we have we have the fate of shrinivasan actually being decided today but let's also look at uh, ceo sundar raman remember he has been accused of contacting a bookie eight times uh, in the season of the ipl he's denied the allegation filed an affidavit in the court and claimed that he wasn't aware that his contact was a bookie That's right, and this contact has been established as Bindu Dara Singh. In fact, uh, during the working committee meeting last week of the BCCI, Sundar Raman, in fact, made a presentation to the board officials and presented his case. After which, they came out vociferously in support of him, and actually, their release even stated that they will back Sundar Raman in the court proceedings. Uh, so, his main argument is that even though he got calls from Bindu Dara Singh, that does not quite mean that he was aware of his activities or that he was uh, a bookie or was indulging in betting. what sundar uh, sundar raman pertaining to him what has also been said in this report is that he informed the icc acsu at the time yp singh who decided that the uh, that uh, the information that sundar raman has provided on raj kundra and gurunath mayappan betting is not actionable so sundar raman therefore can uh, you know shirk off the responsibility in this regard and say that see i informed the icc acsu he decided not to do anything and therefore he has said in his response that it the matter was not therefore taken up uh, at all by anybody else and it was no need to be taken uh, to anybody else uh, important thing with regard to n shrinivasan you know the only real uh, uh, charge that was brought up against him by the mudgal report was the certain dis- uh, the, uh, misdemeanor violation of the player code of conduct by a certain individual three now on that regard the bcci itself has come out and clarified and said that n shrinivasan they have inferred this incident as one that happened on an overseas tour 
uh, which happened at the time when Shashank Manoha was the president. And uh, they have said that uh, it is not fair to say, it is not correct to say that uh, N. Srinivasan or others in the note did not act on this information. The violation was of a minor uh, variety and therefore the player was only orally reprimanded. So the three main findings of this report have been attacked from three various quarters. First being the charge that N. Srinivasan ignored a player code of conduct violation. That has been refuted by the BCCI. Second, that Gurunath Mayapan was indeed a team official, was indulging in betting. Chennai Super Kings have come out and refuted that as well. And thirdly, uh, the charge that was brought up uh, uh, about uh, uh, Raj Kundra and about Sundar Raman, all of these have been refuted. Chennai Super Kings have made their case. N. Srinivasan has made his case, asking him to be reinstated as the board president and that will clear the debt for him to participate in the next uh, 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 elections of the BCCI and also from the BCCI itself. So it's been an all-sided attack on the Mudgal report, not just, you know, making their own arguments, but also refuting the findings of the Mudgal report. So it's going to be extremely crucial to know just how the petitioners defend uh, and make arguments uh, in support of the findings of the Mudgal panel. Here, I just want to emphasize once again that the charge of match-fixing or betting was never really the charge against N. Srinivasan. The charge was of a potential cover-up because he came out and claimed that his son-in-law, Gurunath Mayapan, had nothing to do with the team, which in public uh, perception is absolutely not the case. And secondly, uh, uh, you know, he, he had come out, uh, a, the BCCI panel had come out and given a clean shit to all concerned, including uh, Gurunath Mayapan and Raj Kundra, who have been found guilty of indulging in betting by the Mutkal panel. So the petitioners are going to argue that there was indeed a cover-up. N. Srinivasan's position as the board president, as the Chennai Super Kings owner, as the father-in-law of Gurunath Mayapan, and now even the ICC president, all of it puts him in conflict of interest. I have to note here, though, that there was a separate conflict of interest case going on in the Mumbai High Court and that petition was dismissed which was filed by Aditya Varma, the same petitioner as in this case. Uh, so at least on that account, the Mumbai High Court have dismissed the charge of conflict of interest and of the amendments that were made in the BCCI constitution to allow N. Srinivasan to not just own a franchise but also become the board president. Uh, I think the most important key thing to know today is going to be the future of N. Srinivasan. The BCCI AGM has already been postponed twice. Right. Uh, it has never happened before. It's quite historic that the BCCI has stood against, stood behind N. Srinivasan so vociferously. And then uh, whether he's going to be allowed to participate in that elections is the major thing that everybody is waiting to hear. Because uh, forget the legalities of this case. Uh, this case has been about N. Srinivasan at the helm and the inner functionings of the BCCI. And when we say that you know, this case could potentially clean our cricket. It relates to all of these matters, the internal workings of the matter uh, of the BCCI, which have never really been uh, out in the public uh, domain, except for when the Supreme Court intervened. So very, very right. crucial to know just what the Supreme Court makes of the findings of the Mudgal report today. Right, Rasesh, going through the BCCI's rather aggressive affidavit that they filed, where Shivani has been mentioning this, so vociferously have backed and Srinivasan the hilt uh, has received a certain amount from the B, uh, you know backing from the BCCI who has said that, uh, that, that the player was in fact reprimanded verbally if you can actually sort of elaborate on the affidavit that was filed by the BCCI and uh, how that's going to really play out in court today Look, I think it's been a very smart uh, defense as far as the BCCI is concerned. Uh, to, to, add, uh, to add to the four points that Shivani made out about the fact that the board has been saying in its affidavit of it that the, the, the incident happened not during the course of the IPL but during one of the overseas tour in 10-11. In it's assumed that that is the incident where one of the India players was involved in the tour of Sri Lanka. Uh, that's what the BCCI's affidavit of says. But, uh, you know, BCCI's defense is that uh, Shashank Manohar was the president at the time and as far as they are concerned, they look at it as a minor incident and even the president at the time that is Mr. Shashank Manoru, who as we know is a staunch opponent of Mr. Srinivasan, is not also guilty because even he has acted to, to a small misdemeanor. So in a sense, they're defending Mr. Manohar to ensure that uh, the blame does not come on Mr. Srinivasan, who happened to be the secretary at the time that incident took place. So the BCCI's defense all along is being that they look at it as a small incident and uh, it was the prerogative of the president at the time who decided to, to orally reprimand the player and since that has been done, uh, there is nothing more that the board could have done at that point in time. In many right. ways, the intent is that the whole idea is to defend Mr. Srinivasan, who was the secretary of the board at the time, saying that he had nothing to do with it. It was the call of the president and he decided to take that call at the time.
Rasesh Mandani uh, uh, joining us from Mumbai and Shivani Gupta joining us from outside the Supreme Court. Remember, this is as the very, very crucial hearing is uh, slated to resume at 2 p.m. this afternoon that will decide the fate of Enshinivasan and the Chennai Super Kings. Thank you so much for joining us.